So what's up guys and welcome to Ivar's Fly Workshop and um, today we will be trying uh, UV Watson Fancy in like this nymph for a pupa version. It's rather large but uh, it's meant to fish like in the destinations of uh, Thingvellir and the National Park Lake there and stuff. So we are using a hook number Eight, a traditional nymph from Arax for this uh, fly. And uh, and we're using a Semperfly Nano Silk in 50 denier. And we're using, as you see, rather large bead on it. That's simply to get it down. But uh, we will start by attaching the thread to the hook shank, of course. And this fly would be meant more for fishing in lakes and stuff, and especially in the springtime when you need like heavy patterns to get down. Um, for the underbody of the fly, you can use any kind of cotton, you know, yarn or whatever you have. Just pick the one you don't use and you will never use, and that's just perfect for the for the purpose of an underbody because um, I would rather like to you know save that stuff and the body material itself this also this um, cotton stuff this will absorb, absorb water and it's gonna make the fly even heavier a bit heavier for casting and stuff like that but it's gonna be okay so here we have the underbody. We'll just uh, catch that in with our thread and then snip away the accessing material, like so. And uh, the next step will be the rib of the fly. And I'm using a sample fly uh, 0 0.2 mil uh, silver wire for this. You can use like if you want like an oval tensile as well, but I prefer the wire. It's like what for this task it's stronger than the oval tensile. And we'll bring that all the way back there and we'll keep the thread like under the side, you know, on the underside of the hook. And then we'll bring our thread forward and start to to reinforce the body. And you can use any kind of, you know, head cement. I'm using just this old-fashioned uh, cellulose uh, head cement. And that is, we are doing that for increased durability of the fly. And I have to admit that in my videos, I'm not too active to do this with any types of flies uh, I'm tying. But uh, if you want to increase the durability of your flies in general, uh, this will be something that you should maybe think of. That is to get like a head cement on this um, part of the body, and it's going to make your fly way stronger. Uh, the first part or the first segment of the body itself, that is on DMC yarn, uh, number 321 is the color name of it, and you can get this in the craft store. I'm using like uh, I'm using like uh, three or four strands for the body, but as you see, uh, like any any type of red yarn will do the job. I I just like the uh, DMC one because it uh, comes in six strands and you can separate them and they're soft and strong and uh, really easy to work with. And then you. Uh, tie this in, and you see how we can how we will squeeze the uh, squeeze the uh, uh, head cement forward. We will bring this half the way up, uh, so the body is like in in two segments: the rear and the front. And the rear on this uh, fly is of course uh, red, and this uh, pupa. It based on the uh, Watson Fancy's wet fly, which is, if I recall it correctly, by Donald Watson. It's, I think, the Scottish button originally. For the front segment of the body, 
we'll be using a TS TMC yarn. Uh, number 310 is the black color of the TMC yarn. And you, it's like uh, Fly Tire's best friend uh, alternative material. You can use this for nymphs and just salmon flies and just any kind of uh, fly tying you like. It's just generally just a floss, but it's a really strong material to work with. And uh, it's really nice to uh, have it. It's not too pricey or anything. It's like uh, you can get it in the craft store, like I said, and it is quite nice priced usually. We'll bring this all the way forward here to the beat and try to even squeeze a piece of it into the beat to really secure the beat in its place so it's gonna stay where it's ought to stay. And then we'll bring the thread aside and snip off the remains. And then we got the body of the fly and next step will be the wire and I'm wrapping the wire as a rib in the counter direction of the body material. And that's going to reinforce the body even more to uh, get the silver wire on it. And then we lock that in place with our thread. A few wraps to get it tight down securely. And to get the cleanest possible cut, we'll of course helicopter the wire off, like so. And uh, the fly technically is ready at that point, but I'm going to add uh, for the color just to kind of hide the hide the uh, thread stuff. Yeah, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And you can, if you want, you can support the channel if you like. You can find that uh, information on that in the video's descriptions, plus you'll find, of course, the pattern of the fly there. And we'll bring up this, the um, uh, the Pico Curls, which we use for the um, collar. And take a few tight wraps, and then we'll snip off the tag ends. And then, yeah, the fly is ready. Technically, you could whip finish and just put a little hand cement on the knot and go fishing. But uh, if you're going to do that, it's just, just about fine. But uh, the rest of the video is how I coat it in the, in the just UV resin. And that is, of course, like it's like an optional thing to do, but I find that it's going to be lasting for a longer time. It's going to give different shine on the... On the uh, on the fly and stuff like that, so we'll just get a medium viscosity uh, uh, resin on here. And not much more than this for the first round, because uh, uh, I use usually toothpick to spread this around, not my needle, or needles I have. Just like an ordinary toothpick to smear it on the body, uh, both sides, and coat the body properly with it. Uh, one thing to think about when you have uh, have this, uh, when you're working with this uh, material is that do not get the first round too thick. Your UV light will not uh, cure like a too thick piece of a UV resin. So something like this uh, will just... Uh, place on and sap it with our light, like so, and then we'll be, uh, we'll be adding another round of it to kind of even out the uh, stuff. Here is like a, a ready one, a ready Watson Fancy. We'll take our UV resin. I'm using a fulling mill for this one. It's just, I'm not going to talk bad about fulling mill, but uh, I find there are other other types of, or the brands on the market in the UV uh, segment, which is uh, which I prefer uh, more. My personal preferences is uh, Solaris, but at the moment I do not have Solaris, but um, I'm working on it to get one from the US. So we will just smear this on the body. We will try to even out the um, amount of this 
it's not going to be, of course, it's not going to be perfect, but it does not need to be perfect. It just the important thing is to code all the body. And I will just use a rotary system otherwise to turn it a few times around to get it as even as possible, and then we'll sap it with our light again. And you need to sap it for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 seconds, seconds at least, to really get the uh, material to cook properly and be glass hard, like so. Uh, if you find your UV resin like sticky or tacky, you can uh, place like a coat of solar respawn cure on the on the outer layer of it just to uh, get rid of this tackiness. And I'm going to do that. And then we will sap that with our light. So the third round. So there's like a lot of work. It's like half of the... Uh, at least, yeah. One third of the video is just like uh, working with the UV stuff. Maybe not necessary, but I just wanted to show you how I do this with this uh, with this type of uh, Watson Fancy. So uh, we are done here, I think, and I'm satisfied. And I just want to say thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.